Hey, good morning. Good Friday morning. It is Friday, March the 26th, 2021. Welcome to the Morning Watch. We have made it to Friday. Hope you rested well. Hope you slept well. It's Friday. The weekend is upon us. Um, I hope you've had a great week. Hope you've had a productive week, a joyful week, a day when you felt God's presence with you all week long. We've been in God's Word all week, <clears throat> and um, I don't know about you, but my hypothesis is that being in God's Word every day, because I know what it does for me, it helps me, it undergirds me, it strengthens me, knowing what God's Word is. Let me read you, before we pray, good morning to Kim, Peggy, Robin, Terry. Let me read you a verse that I found yesterday that I just love. It's like become my new favorite verse. Listen to this verse. This is in Jeremiah 15, chapter 16. He says, When I discovered your words, talking about God's word, he says, they, he said, I devoured them. When I discovered your words, I devoured them. They are my joy and my heart's delight. For I, for I bear your name, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Isn't that good? That's what we do in the morning watch. We we discover his word, we devour them, and they become our joy and our heart's delight. Right? And he says here, he says, For I bear your name, O Lord God of heaven's armies. Yeah, and we do. We bear his name. We are his image bearers. We are his ambassadors in this world. Morning to uh, my mom is here, Wilma. My sister Glenna, Kim, Laureen. So let's uh, let's pray, and then we'll jump into our, our 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 study for today. We're in the last chapter of the book of Matthew. Yesterday, when we left the story, it was pretty dark, right? Uh, the tomb was sealed with a big stone, and they put a guard there, and we went into into the night. So let's pray. Lord, thank you for this morning. Thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that we have the ability and the freedom to to talk about you in such a public place. Lord, we just ask that you would guide our hearts and our minds. We're, we're thankful that your word is our joy and our heart's delight. Lord, be with us and guide us today. Let us feel your presence with us all day long, carrying your word with us. Lord, we love you. We ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. Do you ever wonder what, what God's plan is for your life? I think we all do. I think that's a normal question that we as believers ask. Things about marriage, relationships, where we go to school, what our job is, where we go to church. All those things, right? Those are those big moments. <clears throat> the decisions we make with our children. Those are all big decisions that we take to the Lord and want to know what His will is in that situation. Today, we are going to see um, there's so much happening. Only a pretty short chapter, really. Only 20, 20 verses. But there's so much in here. We have the resurrection. We have the Great Commission. And this Great Commission is to you and to me. We never have to worry about, is it God's will for me to share my faith with this person, my neighbor, my co-worker, uh, my family member? He tells us here, he wants us to do that. There are certain things that we don't have to ask God. Is this your will? Because he tells us in his word that it's our will. We filter everything that we do through what God's word says and will know in a lot of situations. All right, let's read. <clears throat> it says, now early on Sunday morning, Easter's close, right? We're getting close to Easter. This is a very Eastery kind of lesson today. He says, early on Sunday morning as the new day was dawning, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went out to visit the tomb. Suddenly there was a great earthquake. For an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, <clears throat> rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. What a cool picture, right? The angel's just 
sitting on top of the rock. It says, his face shone like lightning. And his clothing was as white as snow. The guards shook with fear when they saw him. And they fell into a dead faint. All right. There's a lot happening here already. Early in the morning, right? Early in the morning, they came. Mary and Mary Magdalene, the other Mary, came to visit the tomb. And we know from the other Gospels, they came to anoint his body with oils. You know, we didn't have embalming and that kind of thing happening in biblical times. So they came to visit. And there was a great earthquake. And it says, an angel of the Lord came down and rolled the stone away. Now, this stone's massive, right? It was not something one person could do, but an angel is not a person. An angel is a supernatural being. And he rolled aside the tomb and he sat on top of it, which just shows kind of like, hey, I'm just here, you know? Um, and it says, his face shone like lightning. I was outside yesterday when the lightning started, the storm started coming in yesterday afternoon. And uh, lightning is very bright. Uh, well, scary, even. It's just uh, sort of uh, all that all in one, right? And his clothing was white as snow. Now, the Roman guards were not um, just, you know, regular people. These were trained, hardcore soldiers, killers, um, tough as nails, okay? And the fact that the angel, the sight of the angel made them faint in fear shows you what kind of experience this was, okay? But again, the grave could not hold our Jesus, okay? It says, verse 5, Then the angel spoke to the women. Don't be afraid, he said. I know you're looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He isn't here. He isn't here. It says, he's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. Again, the angel's reminding them what Jesus told them, that he would be raised after three days. He says, Come, see where his body was laying. And now go quickly and tell his disciples he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you to Galilee. You will see him there. Remember what I have told you. So he says, come in here. I want to show you where his body used to be. But it's not there anymore because he's gone. And he's gone on to Galilee. He's gone ahead of you. Don't miss that. You know, today we're not really sure what this Friday is going to hold for us. You know, we don't know. But... The things that give us the thing that gives us great hope today is that the Lord has gone before us. Okay? He's gone before us into situations. Here he's going before them geographically, right? He's going to Galilee and he wants them to come there too. But he goes ahead of us. He paves the way for us. Just as Jesus was resurrected here, the Bible calls him the firstborn of the dead. The firstborn you and I will experience resurrection too. When he returns, if he tarries and we have gone to be with him, we will be resurrected, okay? Uh, in a body, uh, a resurrected, perfected body. So, and so he said, now go tell, basically go tell everybody. The angel says, go tell people. So the women ran quickly, verse 8, from the tomb. They were very frightened, but also filled with great joy. I can imagine that. I mean, these are mixed feelings, right? Terrified and excited at the same time. And they rushed to give the disciples the angel's message. And as they went, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they ran to him, grasped his feet, and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Don't be afraid. Go tell my brothers to leave for Galilee, and they will see me there. It's interesting. Um, biblical times was a very male-dominated society. Okay, Women did not really have a lot of rights other than that granted to them by their fathers and their husbands and even their brothers. But here, it is so cool to consider that, because there is no partiality with God, right? that Jesus chooses to make himself known first to these very special women that were part of his group. Um, again, um, just a blessing to see. So, in verse 11, 
As the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and told the leading priests what had happened. And the guards, I mean, their lives are on the line because uh, Jesus was gone. And it says, a meeting with the elders was called, and they decided to give the soldiers a large bribe. They told the soldiers, you must say, Jesus' disciples came during the night while we were sleeping, and they stole his body. If the governor hears, Pontius Pilate, hears about it, we'll stand up for you so that you won't get into trouble. So the guards accepted the bribe and said what they were told to say. Their story spread widely among the Jews, and they still tell it today. So what does all this mean? They were terrified because they were afraid that they would be executed because they let Jesus away or they let his body get stolen. But they knew that this, this, this lie they were telling, that the disciples came and took the body, there's no way those disciples could have overpowered those guards. There's no way possible. And the stone itself is a, huper, is a superhuman feat to move. So this was a lie. This wasn't true. Jesus appeared post-resurrection to over 500 people in person. They saw him. They touched him. They heard him speak. 500 people. That's documented historical fact. Verse 16. Then the eleven disciples left for Galilee, going to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, and but some of them doubted. I, you know, human nature never ceases to amaze me that after all they had seen and all they had heard and all that had been confirmed for them, that some of them still doubted. Do you ever doubt things? Do you ever wonder about things? You know, um, a lot of people say it's not good to doubt God. I feel like God is big enough to handle a little, a little bit of doubt because here we see it here. And God did not, Jesus did not chastise them for their doubt. He just showed them who he really was. Now this last part, I want us to really take a second to really think about what Jesus is doing here. Come back to that first question that we asked in the beginning. Do you ever wonder what God's will is for you? Well, these next few verses, we call them in the Christian church, we call them the Great Commission. These are orders that are being given out by Jesus to his disciples. Who is Who are his disciples? Yeah, it was these people here, but it's also us. You and I have the same Great Commission that we have been given. Let's see what it says. He says... I have been given authority, all authority in heaven and on earth. Jesus said, this is my place. This is, I have full authority to do what I'm getting ready to do. Okay. He says, therefore, go, go and make disciples of all the nations. Go. We can't stay where we are. You know, sometimes you might be called to an overseas missions Long term or short term. Sometimes you might be called to go across the street and talk to your neighbor. Sometimes you might be called to engage that person at Walmart in the checkout line. When you start talking about life and they said, you know what, I am just in a hopeless situation. And you can say, let me tell you about somebody who can give you hope. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all the nations. Notice it doesn't say make converts. We're not in the business of just getting people to sign on the dotted line. Disciples, people who walk with Jesus. And not only are we make disciples, we are to make disciples who understand that their number one mission in life is to do what? Make more disciples. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit. Do not diminish the value of baptism. Baptism does not save. We In the Baptist church, we don't believe that baptism saves. But it is, a, it is the first act of obedience that believers should show. To show the world externally what has happened in their lives internally. Teach these new disciples to obey all the commands. Okay, how do we know what his commands are? What we see written in God's word. Okay, so as we make disciples, we filter, we, we do life with them. We filter we, we, we filter what we're learning in God's word through this relationship, community. And my question to you and me this morning is, 
we should always be discipling somebody. And then who's discipling us? I need discipling. I need someone who can pour into me. Because you can't pour out of an empty cup, right? Last verse, and we're done. He says, teach, them, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I've given you. And be sure of this. Be sure of this. Okay? Because there's a whole lot of this world that we can't be sure of. But Jesus says, be sure of this. I am with you always. Even to the end of the age. That should give us great hope today. I am with you always as you go and make disciples and as you mess up and as you get knocked down and you get back up and you're afraid and you're anxious and you're mad and you're sad. All of those things all rolled into one. Know this, you are not alone. Jesus says, I will be with you always. Feel alone, feel betrayed, feel hurt, disappointed. All of those things, Jesus knows what those things felt like because he was tempted too. He was sad. He felt alone. Remember the disciples, they couldn't stay awake. He knows what it's like for his father to turn his back on him. That's what he did on the cross. It's a wonderful message. I hope you've been blessed by it. Uh, Terry, please pray for Jake. Okay, I'll open heart surgery today. We sure will. Let's all pray for Jay as he has surgery today. Hey, good morning, Rosemary and Ken Amon. All right, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for your message. We pray, Lord, that you would never let us forget that you are always with us. Always. Lord, let us really truly understand and embrace the mission that you've given us to go and make disciples. Lord, we love you. And we ask all this in the name of Christ. Amen. All right. I love you all. Have a great Friday. Went a little long today. Short chapter, but went a little long. Uh, Monday, we'll start with the book of Mark chapter one on, um, on Monday morning. So have a wonderful weekend. Uh, God bless you.